Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with the One True King. We are glad to have you join us this morning. Today, I'm going to be sharing my testimony with you. You're going to hear about what God has done in my life. Let us pray, and then we will get started on today's lesson and, and dive into the Word of God. Holy Father, I ask for your Holy Spirit to meet us here, Lord Jesus. Come and have your way, Father God. May you be glorified. May you be lifted up. May you be honored and praised. It's all about you, Jesus. It's not about me. In Jesus' holy name, amen. We are going to start with the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 7. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. For they think they will be heard because of so many words. Verse 8. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. That was Matthew 6, verses 7 and 8. How many of you have ever heard of Christian singer Matthew West? It's, it's been quite some time since Matthew West first, rele first released his song, Walking Miracles. The title of today's lesson is The Ultimate Physician my life with silver palsy. The first verse of the song Walking Miracles by Matthew West says this. Let me tell you about William. He's been fighting battles since day one. The doctor said his life was over, yeah, before it had begun. They said he never walked, but now he walks. They said he never talk, but now he talks. I guess you could say, I guess you could say, he's a living, breathing, walking miracle. The chorus says, oh, though all around us, everywhere we go, the proof that we should never give up hope, because we serve a God who turns impossible into living, breathing, walking miracles. If you've never heard my story, I have a story a lot like William's. Very similar in the fact that the doctors told my parents the same thing, that my life was over before it had begun, that I would never walk or talk. But you can see, just like William, I now walk and talk. Um, if you look at the book of Job 29, verse 15.
Job 29, 29 verse 15 says, I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. You can conquer any obstacle in your life serving Jesus. Speaking of that, my life began differently than many others 33 years ago. My parents asked God for another child. I have an older brother named Chris who prayed for a sister. Talking about faith of a child at the age of four, my mom became pregnant. The Lord said you're going to have twin daughters. We were supposed to be her Christmas babies on December 15th, but God had a different plan. My family was so excited. Chris, who turned five later that summer, couldn't wait to have two sisters. Mom's pregnancy was going well until the 25-week mark at five and a half months. She developed preeclampsia, high blood pressure, and twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome, which is a real condition where identical twins share a placenta. My mom was admitted to a German hospital because she started going into premature labor. Her body thought she was full term. They stopped her label numerous times, but three weeks later, the day arrived where the medicine no longer worked. The morning of September 15th, she had an emergency C-section, and we made our debuts. Twin B, Leah, was born first. A minute later, Twin A, that's me, was born second. Leah weighed one pound, zero ounces, and I weighed one pound, 12 ounces. Unfortunately, she didn't survive and passed away two hours after birth. I know without a doubt, she is in heaven with Jesus and I will meet her in the future when he calls me home. If you look at the book of 2 Samuel, Four, verse four, it says, Jonathan's son of Saul had a son who was lame in both feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. His nurse picked him up and fled, but as she hurried to leave, he fell and became disabled. His name was Mephibosheth. Doctors told my parents my chance of surviving through the night was slim. And every day after that, they heard, don't get your hopes up. Upon my arrival in the NICU, neonatal intensive care unit, I was placed on a ventilator because I couldn't breathe on my own due to my lungs not being fully developed. I was on the ventilator for about a month until I was able to breathe on my own, which caused my cerebral palsy. I wasn't born with cerebral palsy. Mine happened after birth. It didn't happen during birth. It happened after due to the ventilator. I had eye surgery at three months old. They froze the blood vessels to keep me from going blind. Four months after birth, my parents brought me home on a heart monitor, which I wore daily for a year. My parents thought they were going to get me to get to bring me home that Christmas. 
but then I had eye surgery right before Christmas and so the, doc the doctor said no she can't come home yet and they were all heartbroken because they had looked forward to bringing me home at Christmas they had the hopes up and so then they were let down once again but they kept their faith in Jesus because they knew that he let me live this long and so they knew that he was going to allow them to bring me home. Allow the, along the way, they noticed there were some developmental delays. I was laughing and smiling like a normal baby, but I wasn't sitting up crawling or trying to walk like other children my age were. Almost two years later, my parents requested to return to the U.S. They knew I was going to need services, but they didn't know exactly what type because I hadn't been diagnosed with cerebral palsy yet at that time. I went to several doctors and specialists. At the age of three, my parents finally received the medical diagnosis. She has cerebral palsy, CP, and is a quadriplegic. All four of my limbs are involved, my legs and my arms. I was not born with cerebral palsy. As I said before, mine was caused by my brain hem hemorrhaging after birth from being on the ventilator for a month. Silver palsy affects my mobility and muscle tone. All four of my limbs are involved, as I said before, but particularly on my whole right side. My doctors told my parents I would never walk or talk. However, the ultimate physician had other plans and just goes to show and just goes to show that he can use anyone to serve his kingdom. God put it on my heart to share my testimony today. Some of y'all may have heard it before. Some of y'all that um, are friends of mine know me and have heard it in the past. Nevertheless, somebody out there needed to hear it again today. Or for the first time. My prayer is that it inspires someone that it gives them hope and encouragement. Maybe maybe they have a child right now that, that was born premature and they need a little bit of faith. Jesus can lift you up even when you don't see how there's going to be a way through the situation you're in, Jesus will provide a way for you to make it through. If you have any prayer requests, you can list them in the comment section at this time. I'm going to share with y'all the plan of salvation for anyone who has not accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. None of us are guaranteed the next five minutes. So that is why it is so very important to accept Jesus into your life and make sure that your life is right with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Lord, I repent of all my sins. I believe that 2,000 years ago you died on the cross. And three days later after you went down into that grave, you rose from it. 
and you ascended into heaven and you sat down at the right hand of God the Father and you're still on heaven's throne today you're making intercession for us you're answering our prayers and you're still doing miracles today you're still healing people today through your miracle work and power you're still breaking chains of bondage and setting people free today because you are the ultimate physician what doctors say is impossible is possible for you lord you are the hero you are the savior lord i love you lord with all my heart soul mind and strength and with all my might and your word says if you love the lord your god with all your heart soul mind and strength and with all your might you will be saved if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. In Jesus' holy name, amen. If you just accepted Christ as your personal Savior, welcome to the family of God. You ask, well, what are my next steps? Find a local church near you. Let the pastors there know that you just got saved. They will have classes and resources available for you. They will have Sunday school. They will also have Bibles. Or if you want to get started reading God's Word, you can purchase a Bible like this one online from your Christian bookstore. Um, you can, there's various uh, retailers that have them online that you can purchase from. Or you can download the free Bible reading apps to your mobile device or tablet and read the Bible that way. You can also go to your internet browser and the search engine type Bible. Click on one of the websites and you can get God's word in your heart and on your mind that way and memorize it. Just various tools to memorize God's word and to study the Bible. Um, so there were a few opportunities on how you can start reading the Word of God uh, today. It's very important that you make a time to study the Word because the Word has complete truth in it. It's 100% truth. It's full of wisdom and knowledge and direction on how you should um, go about your day-to-day -day life. If you're looking for answers, you won't find any better answers than right here on the Word of God. Jesus is the answer. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. You'll find that in Scripture. Hope y'all have a blessed week. If you have any prayer requests, y'all can always come to Jesus or Intercessor on Facebook. Click join the group if you haven't already joined. And we will gladly pray for you about anything. Also, if you enjoyed today's lesson and was inspired by it, click that share button. Invite your friends and family members to join us next week as we get back into our series, Falling in Love with Jesus. He never fell. He never leaves. He never fails either. But it's falling in love with Jesus. He never leaves. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Hope you all enjoying this nice, cool fall weather. I sure am. Um, it's nice having a break from the humidity and heat, but fall is my favorite season anyway, so I, I always love it when the weather gets cool and you can actually go outside and enjoy the weather without being, um, without sweating.
so it's great. Um, have a blessed week, as I said before, and I will see y'all next Tuesday. Bye.